Amen. Let's talk about life in the Spirit. Um, Each year, I spend some time praying, usually about October, November. I'm starting to think about a theme for the next year. This phrase has actually been on my heart and on my mind for at least six months. You know, last year, um, we, um, we went through the book of Genesis and then um, did some, I preached through the Gospel of John. And um, shortly into the Gospel of John, we talked about how um, the life that John is talking about, the life that Jesus is talking about is spiritual life. And how um, Jesus was teaching us how there's spiritual life and there's natural life, and that when we are in him, we are living life on both levels. We are living out a spiritual life as well as our natural life. And Jesus came to bring heaven and earth together. He came to bring those two together. He came to show us the Father. He came to show us what spiritual life is so that we're living in, in both reality, spiritual reality and physical reality. And then you remember um, Pastor Dan Ombija from Kenya came last year. And he was talking about altars. And, and Dave kept saying, you know, there's something about what he said. There's something about what he said that, that we need to get a hold of. And, and uh, you know, I, I went back and I re-listened to that message, Dave, and... He, Pastor Dan Ombija, defined altars as a place where heaven and earth meet, where spiritual reality is transacted on earth. That's, that's what an altar is. And it's like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, and when we think about um, um, as a church, we, we are not just an institution, but we're also an altar, we're a place where, hopefully, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing as kingdom people, spiritual reality and earthly reality are coming together here, both individually and also corporately. And where um, spiritual reality is being transacted in the natural realm through us as a church. That's an altar. Um, And then another thing, um, as I was um, reading this summer, Carrie and I went on vacation and I took a book with me. It's um, Simply Christian by N.T. Wright. Now, maybe you don't know who N.T. Wright is. I guarantee you that anybody who is a current biblical scholar has heard that name because he's probably one of the best New Testament scholars that's alive today. And he wrote a book called Simply Christian, and he talks about this, these two realities, heaven and earth. And he says, you know, part of the body of Christ has acted like heaven and earth never meet. And then you have the New Agers and so forth that are acting like they're completely intertwined and never separated. But he said... The truth is, is that they do meet, and to some degree they overlap, but they're still separate. And he said that is where we live as Christians, in that intersection of heaven and earth, in that intersection of spiritual reality and natural reality. In fact, he said, if you follow the theme of God's presence through the Bible, as represented in the temple. The temple being the place, the altar, literally, where heaven and earth meet and where that relationship is transacted. He said, guess what? When the Holy Spirit fell and when a flame of fire rested on each one of them, do you know what the message was? that God was sending through that? He was saying, you and I, each one of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit, are an altar. 
We are the temple, Paul said. Twice corporately, once individually. We are that place where heaven and earth meet and where that is transacted. That's who we are as believers. So as I'm thinking about this and I'm contemplating this, I'm thinking to myself, how do we do this? (laughs) How do we do this? I understand that natural reality. I, 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 I think I figured out now how to live my life and try to be a good person. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about living a life that is a demonstration of supernatural reality. That's a step up. So this is what I'm thinking about as we're going into this new year. And as, uh, the, the words that the Lord gave me is just life in the Spirit. And I'm not just talking about the Holy Spirit, but I'm talking about living in that intersection of spiritual reality and natural reality. And if obviously the Holy Spirit is key to that. But... I had this in my head, and, and uh, those of you who are in the, the leadership team, uh, you've already seen my preaching outline for the, the whole year. I sit down and I outline it all. Not that that can't change, but just that it's best to steer a moving vehicle. So beginning this year, um, well, first of all, next week we're going to have a guest speaker. Joel Hackman from the Telford Church is going to come and preach next Sunday because Carrie and I are taking a spiritual retreat. This week, we're taking some time to go away and just seek the Lord. And so Joel's coming next Sunday and he's going to preach. And, and uh, when it comes to the spirit, spiritual reality, especially the spirit and the flesh and how they interact in us as individuals, that's, that's like his sweet spot. That is where he spends a lot of his time and energy thinking about. And I'm looking forward to what he's going to bring next week. But then uh, I want us to go back and revisit um, our theme. I want us to revisit our process steps. You know, the respond, the restore, the release, the relate. And um, partly just to remind us of who we are, what our vision is, what we are about as a congregation. But also to try to answer the question, what do those steps look like in light of life in the Spirit? How can we take it up a notch to where it's not just living a good Christian life, but it's living in that intersection of spiritual reality and natural reality? And then uh, in February, I, we have another guest speaker, Becky Jones, who is our Hope Well Network intercessor, is going to be coming February 12th, and I've asked her to talk about praying in the Spirit, because this is another thing It's not... So much a preaching topic as much as it's a personal goal, I have personally felt like I need to understand prayer better, differently, have a renewed understanding of how I can pray in such a way as to be an altar. (laughs) Um, Because I think I'm good at taking my request to the altar. I'm not sure that I've discovered entirely what it means to be an altar. So that's something I want us to explore as a church. Then um, one of the things I do when I'm preparing a preaching calendar is I try to do a couple of series that are expository. That is to say, preaching right out of the scripture, letting the scripture dictate what it is that I'm saying instead of topically, taking a topic and then going to the scripture to support it. Um, So typically I try to pick an Old Testament book and a New Testament book. Um, I'm going to begin with the New Testament this year. We're going to go through the book of 1 Corinthians. And I want to ask the question, 
what does it mean to be a spirit-filled church? I know we say that. We have it on, one of our keywords on Google is spirit-filled church. If anybody's looking for a spirit-filled church, we're it. But there again, I'm thinking to myself, what does that mean in light of these overlapping realities? We're not just talking about a church where you're allowed to speak in tongues, <laughs> right? We're talking about a church where heaven and earth meet, intersect, and where we are transacting the things of heaven. What does that mean? What does that look like? So that's going to be covering a good part of the first part of the year here. Along with that, um, it's been mentioned in our leadership meetings that we need to explore, we need to inventory what are the gifts of the Spirit that are resident here in the congregation and how can we utilize those. So we're going to take some time to do that. Uh, we're also going to take time to uh, explore the fruit of the Spirit because I, I really believe that the gifts and the fruit need to both exist. <laughs> Not just, if you, if you have the gifts without the fruit, it's messy. <laughs> so we're going to explore both. And then uh, in the fall, another expository series, I have been drawn to the book of Zechariah, minor prophet in the Old Testament. Honestly, I have never studied through the book of Zechariah before, so I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm doing my sermon preparation, honestly, I, I, will, I will have a title, I'll have a thought, I'll have a few ideas. I feel like the Holy Spirit just gives me breadcrumbs. And I am just like following this breadcrumb trail. And I have no idea where it's leading me to. I'm just picking up these breadcrumbs along the way. And I feel like this is, this is one of those things. I have no idea what Zechariah holds, except that uh, I've entitled this series Visions of Hope. Uh, that's based on some research that I did um, as a, a theme. There are a lot of visions in Zechariah, in that book. And um, this one verse in Zechariah, I feel like it could be a theme verse for the year. Um, Zechariah 4, 6. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, who, which, by the way, was the high priest. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. So there's another one of those breadcrumbs. This is a big breadcrumb. This is like, God, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Because I know how to do things in the natural. I, 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 I'm comfortable with might. I'm comfortable with power. I don't know what to do with the spirit. But I think that's what God wants us to learn. Then, of course, we're also, this summer, I'm going to be taking your hot topics and uh, going to try to uh, answer any questions that we have, and then Advent also. But these are just some of the questions that, these are my questions for reflection as I'm preparing for this next year, and I'll just leave them with you. First of all, what does it mean to live by the Spirit? And then more specifically, how do we live in both realities? How do we facilitate the connection of heaven with earth? And then how do we live out the true mission and purpose of the church in light of that?